All right, so gonna run through very quickly uh, what's going on in the baby step thread. Um, you can look for yourself. It'll probably be closed by the time anyone bothers to watch us and merged into 10x very soon, hopefully. So let's see what we got going on. Um, first of all, let's start over the CIS. It's pretty substantial changes going on there. Uh, make sure we're at 100% viewport here. Okay, so what we used to have is something like this, like these horrifically undesigned systems, you know, things thrown in place because it's a view from Drupal Woohoo. Um, now, working towards is this, a, a very nice, slick grid of things, easy to find, uh, easy to figure out what operations to accomplish. Um, and so from there, we can jump over to the course content for this. Uh, some other very minor notes. In fact, actually, I'll switch over to a student account. Um, let's go impersonate and student for this little demo. Um, some minor things of note. Um, this item, you see it defaults to course content in this case. There's nothing that says home. Uh, so some very simple types of subtleties removed. There's also a lot, uh, a lot better mobile support than there was previously. So, so I drag in here, we're gonna see, there we go, snap. So much more consolidated view on mobile. Um, and then also color is a lot more uh, black and white shades of gray for, for the content portion of Elms. Um, so you note, we still have these icons that kind of color shift over to uh, what they would be about, but the content one, we kind of want the content to shine on its own. So like if you're putting rich media in, that's the thing that should be, you know, eye popping. Um, so let's go to, uh, I'm gonna just fake to a node right now, just so that I go to a piece of content. Um, now that isn't what students would do. Students would be here and they would, you know, click to a page, but I, I have some garbage content here. So I've actually imported a pretty legit outline of content. Now, the first thing to note there, I didn't touch any keys. Uh, the second thing, performance on this thread is way faster than previous, both in perception, you know, such as Flash of style content, and legitimately, it is way faster. Um, this is what happens when you don't sleep on a plane. So, you see, we do some nice little UX things here. Like, if I refresh this, we jog down automatically, so the content is in focus, right? So. Now, if I go to the course content, and this would be the equivalent of, I've kind of, you know, stumbled here, so to speak. So I'm on studio and I go back there, which cause I'm masquerading as people get logged out. But so imagine I was in the studio and then I would jump back over to my content to do some reading, right? We don't do any jogging. We're, we're trying to relocate, refine our context. Who are we right now? Kind of a thing. Um, I am gonna impersonate Again, some other subtleties going on here. Um, these modals are all now driven by a singular modal tag. So they're gonna have a lot more design uniformity. Uh, they are way more accessible than they were previously. So I'll use a keyboard here, Hit, uh, change section, pop that up. I can go to close dialog and you'll see it refocuses me right where I was. Um, then I can go and I get refocused. So we have this really nice uh, stack order defeating type of system with this tag, which makes it incredibly easy to implement highly accessible modals. Um, and so they're gonna just start, they're only gonna look nicer, but they're way more accessible than they were previously. Um, so let's go in here, let's reset our section, even though that doesn't mean anything in our little local thing. Let's go and impersonate a user now. Do that student again. Again, you see very fast page load. I'm gonna go to uh, node 100 in this case. Okay, so Node 100, this is actually running uh, some courses, some content by one of our faculty. Um, some immediate things to note. Uh, we have a lot better use of space here. So there's less options visible at any given time on the, on the right hand side of the interface. Um, and we also, you know, because we're kind of, we're jogging down from that top. Yeah, people can get back up there, but because we're jogging down from there, you're really just focused directly on the material itself. Um, so I can, you know, go and read about Mike. And then when I hit next page, it jogs me back up, nice uh, smooth scroll motion back to where I was. 
Um, if I won't know what I'm looking for because I was here before, like, oh, you know, I'm going to go to lesson three. Um, again, no page refreshing going on here, just really slick Ajax interactions. You also note there used to be a lot of like blues associated with hover states and things, and now it's all in a, a black, white, gray um, family here, with the exception of, you know, links, links you want to kind of offset pop from the interface. Um, so that then what I'm reading, the focal point is the material itself. And so as I dig into some of this stuff, you'll see it's much, much brighter, much nicer design overall, even though it's very subtle for the most part, the differences. Um, another big thing, because this block is wider, we can give you much more context as to what the title of something is. Uh, scrolling happens a lot faster. It's applied more cleanly than it was previously. Uh, we also got feedback about uh, making print very visible. So anywhere you can just click this and it'll expand into the three types of printing options you have if you have permission. Uh, so I can print this page. There we go. That's that page popped open. I could print the outline and that's a little bit more aggressive, right? <laughs> Depending on where I am, that just loaded a whole ton of nodes, throws them into a print, or I could hit PDF and get a PDF of that. Um, PDF is going to be improving um, because there are certain characters that actually break PDF processing on PHP based systems. So we're moving to Pandoc for that. Um, so I can, you know, jump around. It's incredibly fast. If I pull up the inspector, to go about finding this stuff. You can see this course is written OER or Creative Commons. I can also pop open the outline and then another you know, nice little subtlety is to see modals will sticky their headings to the top. Again, we're using the same type of modal as before. So if I hit escape, I can get out of that and refocus the browser on the outline button and click that, go down. Let's say I want to do lesson six and then we're taken there. Now, it didn't, again, it's everything is Ajax reloading within this context is pretty slick. Um, but now if I hit outline, you see it's kept my, my visual position that I'm on lesson six. It's also got that highlighted that, hey, you're viewing lesson six right now. And I can see, hey, I'm still within the outline so that I can easily jump from this kind of you know, worldview tunnel down into the thing I'm focused on. Now, I could have just clicked in this part of the interface, but... Uh, or this part of the interface. So it's really about which way you want to go about doing that. Um, it doesn't make a ton of difference right at the moment with these this this example with you know just a generic one through fifteen. Um, but some of these, as you get pretty far down the rabbit hole, um, right? So like if I were to be way out here, then and you know this is also illustrating we'd have uh, the same types of content content tweaking like this is uh purple headings on this because there's a setting along here to indicate to make those deeper pages purple type of deal you can see there's a banner that's got parallax on it that got loaded in automatically so i went to that page um got some other ones somewhere in here but um so very fast experience uh for for students another thing is some of the items that were on there have been moved you know preferences is now Underneath the user menu, that makes a lot more sense to have your preferences there. Um, and then those page formats are actually on the UI now instead of, you know, buried away. And so if I want to pull up Speed Reader, which is a pretty cool thing, but it's still, you know, pretty specific, less common, I can do that. Again, the accessibility options carry over here. If I want to turn on FERPA protection for my own purposes, I don't want someone to, other people to look over my shoulder, see what I'm working on. Um, I can, I can do that. I can, you know, tweak my accessibility settings to my preferences. Um, so I can get out of there. Um, we can also, uh, let's revert and go back to admin view now. And so you see, hey, no longer logged in as that person. Um, another interesting little thing. You see now the only, uh, and I should change the color of this as well. The only t uh, two or three, actually three visual differences between a student view and someone with escalated permissions here is that I have this nice little light blue pencil um, or the light blue, hey, you can add something. Um, and so I also get the more apps because I actually have access to more things than student, but you know, technically some students could have access to things under there. Uh, so I won't remove it entirely. You see, I also get those extra buttons as we showed before with changing section and impersonating accounts and things like that. Um, so we're getting a lot more 
UI consistency um, and refinement here so that now as we move over to other systems, which you know haven't been built out just yet, um, you can see those design patterns now propagate over there. So we have less options on the screen. These things are still kept within our preferences bucket uh, under our profile. Um, the menuing system is cleaner as far as tab usage and color coordination. You see it's that subtle you know, use of the, the, the different colors for these two systems, uh, visual you know, identifiers of what is active. And then I can always move back to course outline, which you see has this kind of a gray to it because it's sort of its color, uh, or to the very bright and vibrant open studio with my son making a crazy face um, or me yelling. So again, these little touches are starting to show up everywhere. So the same type of navigational structure there, uh, we fix something once, we fix it everywhere type of deal. This is really the power of, of web components um, in action here, you know, so that when I go to something and I have a consistent interaction pattern, and when I go and pop up an image, that that's that modal with the accessibility settings baked in to refocus me back on the item that I was on. So we start to get these things for free once we really buy into web component-based approach. Um, so... Uh, that's kind of the, the state of, of the universe and what's, what's going to be merged into 10x soon. It's kind of a big deal as far as uh, how much more performant that branch is. We're going to start to see more of these interfaces hollowed out and, uh, and replaced, with, uh, replaced with these one-page apps. Um, much like the CIS is starting to demonstrate with this one. Uh, also going to start to focus on these interfaces within here in, in CIS. Um, because, you know, I could make a blog post or whatever, but um, I want to be able to do other operations right from this little dashboard. So, nope, there's my confirmation, the build step, so there's a little Z-indexing thing. Um, so, you see, we still have some, some things to work out with this, um, but it's coming along very nicely. Um, you know, filter, oh, those sorts won't, that sort will work. Um, and so we can just keep leveraging the element you know, library we already have to build more and more things. We clean up some tabs in one place, we get them cleaned up everywhere. Um, so 10X is really shaping up to be pretty transformative as far as performance.